or not. I mean, probably until we get them off diesel, but I don't know. That is a conversation point. Um, for businesses that are heavy emitters, um, if you support energy efficiency where they're going to get significant reductions, like, you know, if we, the gentleman over here talked about scrubbers, you're going to get significant reductions. Should you be supporting, helping to support those businesses? I think that's a conversation, an adult conversation that we need to have. Um, but we are absolutely, we are committed because we can't be, it makes no sense. I agree with you. I mean, you're not going to do inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. You're going in the absolute wrong direction. Um, but we are making massive investments in renewables and public transit and green infrastructure and all these other things, but I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, the target. So the target. We, so the first thing that is important to know, it's very easy to announce a target. So I can announce a target today. Well, I mean, I have someone, people would be very unhappy if I did it, probably. Or they just say, what are you doing? But, um, you know, the, the Stephen Harper announced a target but didn't have a plan. So first of all, what I think is really important, if you're gonna build confidence, you need to do the hard work to get to your target. And I know that doesn't make everyone always happy. They, you know, Elizabeth May and I have had many discussions, we swim together. Sometimes I have to swim underwater, because I'm like, no, I'm just at swim practice. And she'll be like, you know, you need to do this. What we need to do is first of all, get the critical elements of what we have committed to right now. We have over 50 measures because people will stop believing you if you just have targets and you don't meet them. The Paris Agreement, I agree we need to be more ambitious. Um, and in terms of our targets, we're already three quarters of the way there and that doesn't count the investments we're making in public transportation, in doubling the amount of nature, in the clean innovation piece, and the plastic pollution piece. But yes, we need to do more. And the Paris Agreement requires every country to come back every five years and be more ambitious. And we're gonna come up with our platform in the election which will be more, which will outline how we can be more ambitious, because I agree with you. But first of all, we need to deliver, people need to believe in what we're doing, and we also have to be real. So now, unfortunately, Ontario, when they said they weren't gonna have a price on pollution, that was like reopening 30 coal fire units. <laughs> like, the problem is I inherit, we inherit that as a, as a federal government, so we've gotta also be focused on, uh, on other governments doing, you know, continuing to be ambitious. Um, okay, there are a few more. Great Lakes. So every time I go to the United States, I go and talk to senators, um, governors, uh, mayors about the Great Lakes. And the U.S. Trump administration tried to cut the funding for the Great Lakes. They're part of the funding. Once again, water doesn't know any borders. So we said you can't do that. And I've said that to my counterparts, the administrator, um, both administrators, they said you can't do this. But it's a win for you to reinvest. In, in the Great Lakes, their jobs. It's an economy that's worth three trillion dollars, I think. Like that whole economy around the Great Lakes. You're gonna ruin your economy if those lakes die off. And Lake Erie is in really bad shape. So anyway, we are working on that. We will continue to work on it, but the reality is politically they can't cut the funding. They just can't. It's not politically acceptable for them. They threaten to do it all the time. We remind them they can't, but so does every governor and mayor and, and folks around there. Do we have another question? Oh, no, I mean, if I have a question, I probably have to finish now, but did I cover name, all the questions? The name, the carbon tax. Oh, we're rebranding. I'm always trying to rebrand. We started off, well, we never really started with carbon tax because people don't like that, but we talked about it, a price, uh, we talked about um, tackling carbon pollution, we talked about a price on carbon pollution, we evolved to put a price on the pollution, the Prime Minister said it can no longer be free to pollute. But I think this idea that calling it an investment in clean air, that's also a way of doing it. But the reason, it's actually just, I don't live and die by polling, but it's good to know where people are at. When you look, if Ontarians know that it's no longer free to pollute and they will get more money back through the climate action sense of rebate, the large majority of Ontarians will accept it. Yeah. My challenge right now is I'm fighting a misinformation campaign. Mm -hmm. The conservative politicians are sending flyers probably to some of you folks, depending on what riding is from, which don't mention the climate action sense of rebate. They say, go get money back through your tax system, but they don't talk about the most important new measure, um, that they're stickers. So I agree with you, but I think that the thing that we can't do is that hard things are hard. We can't continue to just say we can't do things because they're hard. Of course we have to win because I don't want to lose all of this and get a government that doesn't want to take action on climate change. But I think people, Jean Chrétien, I'll end on this. Jean Chrétien is one of my mentors. Jean Chrétien, I don't know how many of you know French, so I'll translate it, but I have to do it in the French first. Jean Chrétien said to me, he 
was giving me advice. The most important piece of advice I ever got in politics. Les Canadiens sont raisonnables. Soyez raisonnables. He said, I don't think he was thinking that we were maybe he was giving me advice that he thought maybe we weren't doing this, but he said, Canadians are reasonable. Be reasonable. And that is why we're making it no longer free to pollute, but we're giving the money back. So you can make a choice. You can save more money. You have an incentive, a direct incentive to save money. Um, or you don't. But you're going to get the money back because life does have to be affordable. I do have to worry about jobs. I do have to worry about the economy. But I also have to worry about the future we're leaving to our kids. And I don't think we can shy away from really important policies. Over 50 countries in the world have a price on pollution. This isn't groundbreaking, revolutionary stuff. Um, but that's not the only thing we're doing. And I think that's also important. We're doing a whole range, as I said, of everything from phasing out coal to investing in renewables to investing in public transportation to investing in energy efficiency and nature and thought. Like, you have to do all of those things. But you also have to do the things that are really critical in any climate plan has to make it no longer free to pollute. You have to create the right market incentives. But anyway, it is a real pleasure. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our evening. Uh, before we leave, I do want to say a big thank you to Albert Campbell Collegiate Principal Tammy Kelsey. Uh, Tammy's outside, uh, but the, I want to thank the school for hosting this wonderful event. And I know that this can be a tough issue. It can sound very doom and gloom, but there's a lot of hope. Uh, I see that here today. I see that in the people that have come out here to show that they care about this conversation. I do want to acknowledge Jim Braum of Friends of the Rouge Watershed, who I also frequently meet. Thank you for being here, Jim, and for your leadership. And for the many of you who have come out to talk about this issue, uh, if you have any further input, I welcome you to please direct it to my office. We will compile that input and forward it to the minister. And of course, I want to thank Dr. Margaret Eichler for being our amazing moderator. And I want to thank, of course, Mr. Moet for bringing our introductory remarks. And of course, Minister McKenna, she has a very tight schedule. She has a plane to catch, so she's going right to Pearson. You folks know how traffic can be, but I just want to say thank you, Minister McKenna, again. On your daughter's birthday, for being here in Scarborough, thank you all for being here.